Well, with 28% of global emissions coming from construction, one company is trying to pave the way toward a more sustainable building industry. I had a chance to speak about these initiatives with actor, NBA champion, and founder and CEO of Partana, Rick Fox. What is Rick Fox doing in concrete? Uh, that is the question I get the most. Uh, survival at its core is what inspired me. I'm from the Bahamas. Uh, we're on the front line of climate change. And in 2019, we had a hurricane that destroyed our two of our islands. Uh, and it spawned me into more than just financial contribution, but action to solving a problem. I had the support and uh, backing of the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, who too was looking to innovate from the front line and change the way we build. Uh, and we, wanna, we went on a quest together to build carbon negative, hurricane-proof housing to support our efforts when we are faced with such catastrophes. What makes these unique and sustainable? So we have uh, the fortune of having a binder that replaces uh, Portland cement 100% in the production of concrete. Uh, we are fortunate to make nature-positive building materials from upscaled big industry waste. So we take uh, waste elements, uh, using them for a positive feedstock for the likes uh, of an example of that would be brine, which is a waste product from the desalination industry. We use it in our material uh, to get to our finished products of concrete. Uh, and the exciting nature of this is that through the production of these materials, we're able to generate a home, a dwelling unit as one of our products that not only avoids CO2 emissions through the process of, of the production of the concrete, but it also, through the magic of chemistry, removes CO2 from the atmosphere. So we're able to do on both ends, avoiding and removing, uh, we're able to generate a positive finished product that is better for our environment. So no clinkering involved. Uh, we don't need fresh water. Uh, we can use uh, salt water and we get to a finished concrete that's better for our planet. What's the price comparison uh, to this structure, an eco-friendly, sustainable structure, uh, Rick, versus what is available now in a place like the Bahamas? Yeah, currently, uh, emerging markets are, are definitely a, a hotbed for us as a company because uh, we, they already are faced with the growing cost of construction. Uh, and they seem to be at times the last on last ring, last mile, as you would say, uh, in the line of getting such materials. Uh, so because we do not use Portland cement, we're able to compete uh, with Portland cement because we use waste materials to get to our finished binder. Now, cost is a variable that's uh, determined by how bad your problem is, right? Everything is about solving a problem in life. And our, our material solves a problem for islands, small island developing nations like ours, or great developing countries uh, that we are also serving uh, that are looking to not only just talk about sustainability, but remove their, uh, their impact through their development. So uh, depending on what you would want to pay for, for a solution like that determines where you are in the world. We are competitive with Portland Cement. Uh, well, I see that your company, Partana, recently announced a partnership which will expand manufacturing into Saudi Arabia in a deal worth more than $63 billion. So certainly no uh, small money there at all, Rick. What's the vision for this project? So we, we currently right now have moved from the front line here in the Bahamas where we're building affordable housing for in partnership with the government. So we're building a thousand homes here on the ground. That opened the door for a exploratory conversation 18 months ago in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia around their developments uh, needs. Uh, a number of their big major giga projects are now engaged with us in the use of our products there. And if you followed, uh, whether it be Daria, whether it be Sports Boulevard or Neom or all of their developments, you can see their commitment over the coming years to growing their economy and building their nation. Uh, and so our products have found a, a, a home there with one of our partners in Roshan. Roshan is the housing development uh, arm of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and they're building some 400,000 homes. So next up for us is to then also emerge into Africa, where other emerging co countries and, and a continent like Africa can use our materials. How does this compare the materials to traditional cement? So uh, right now, again, if you know much about uh, the production of concrete, you know that traditional cement to get to that binder is done with a clinkering process, which is a crematorium level heating process that emits a lot of 
uh, negativity into the atmosphere to get to that binder. We've been doing it for 200 years. We've been burning rocks for 200 years. It has its place in our in society. It's been the building block of of our our, our world and the development of our world. What we introduce now is a, a, a alternative solution, no different than you get with an electric vehicle in the automobile industry. We're a, a, a new, innovative uh, choice, as you would say, if you're looking to build and develop, but, but also de-link your development from pollution. You're joining me from the Bahamas, as you mentioned. Uh, what about the Bahamas makes that uh, setting for these structures important to you? Well, as I shared at the top, coming back to the Bahamas, which is home for me at a time when we were digging ourselves out of not one, but you know, a multitude of continued storms. We live in Hurricane Alley, which, as you know, uh, the storms have gotten stronger and stronger every year. Uh, come June 1, we'll be in hurricane season again. And when you've been on the ground in the midst of a catastrophe and the aftermath of a hurricane that's a hundred year storm, you hope, to, hope another one doesn't show up but if it does we want to be stronger more resilient we want to have homes that are made from a binder that is it does not erode when it interacts with flooding and salt water which ours gets stronger and we're looking to build homes to date we're we're slowly going underwater we're in the threat of being climate refugees the more we continue to develop and the more the sea level rises on us so we live on coast we live in a coast we're surrounded by water and so our our building materials need to be stronger and and coexist with nature in the area of of getting um, salt water interacting with our concrete and our binder does that successfully so this is why i'm here i'm here not only because i care about our country but I, i'm here on the front line and climate change i was just in dubai Dubai the other day was flooded out. I landed in the midst of all of that, and I, I got to see and witness for five days uh, the experience of, of what climate climate uh, disaster can look like on the ground in the Middle East. So we go where we're, we're being called. Innovation is needed to date. Uh, today, not in 2050 or 2060, where a lot of the goals are pushed out into the future. Um, so we go where people are willing to innovate, and the Prime Minister of Bahamas is one of those to date, and he's leading in that way. And I'm not a Nobel Peace Prize giver, but in my book, he should, he should get a Nobel Peace Prize for his courage and leadership and innovation.